Hello everyone, welcome to the Social Doctor and this is Dr. Ayushi. The Social Doctor is a platform for the doctors by the doctors where we help each and every doctor with his or her career growth and we do that by discussing journeys, experiences and knowledge from successful medical practitioners. And today we have a very special guest, Dr. Tushar Mehta. He is here to discuss about the current situation, the pandemic, how to overcome this, how to get over this. There is a lot of confusion, a lot of emotional and mental stress going on among the doctors, among everybody around, the layman, doctors, everybody is facing the same. And he being a leading motivational speaker has been motivating all of his students and every medical student who has passed his graduation has known him. So welcome doctor to the platform. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you, Thank you so much, Dr. Arishi. Thank you so much yes. for the welcome and the introduction. Thank you. Yes. So, sir, you know, now with this situation, how do you think, you know, things are going and anything on your, your take on the situation? See, well, uh, whatever the situation currently going on all around the country, the first and the foremost thing is that, you know, there are a lot of reasons behind it. There are, uh, you know, uh, probably you know, we were careless a bit. And of course, then the mutation of the virus and, uh, you know, India, I think probably did not believe in getting vaccinated that much. So there are multiple fallacies that have happened, not only on the part of administration, but also on our part, which has led to this thing. But whatever has happened has happened. I personally feel that, uh, you know, when there is any time of chaos or when there is any time of this kind of a calamity, there are only two things that can keep you sane. One is your uh, mental strength that, uh, you know, how strong you are mentally and how capable you are of tackling the things. Uh, in your own space, in your own mind. And the second thing is that how resourceful you are. So I personally feel uh, that uh, at this moment, uh, you know, every Indian, whether a medico or a non-medico or anybody, uh, should be contributing to this pandemic uh, in his or her own way. That is either by creating awareness, as I'm sure your platform, the social doctor is doing, or, you know, trying to help the people out there in the field or, uh, you know, doing the bit, doing your bit, whatever best you can. It is not, uh, you know, the, these are unprecedented times. See, we have to understand. I mean, there's something like this happens in centuries. I mean, the last thing that we've heard was something was, which is, I'm sure, which everyone knows now by the Spanish flu, which we have heard kabhi hua tha time se. So <clears throat> it is an unprecedented time. It is going to be written in the, you know, in, in the textbooks. There will be literature about it. The people will maybe 50 years, uh, 70 years or 30 years down the line, people are going to Google it. That, uh, you know, you will have a story. If at all we survive, we have a story to tell to our, uh, you know, kids and I'm sure uh, grandchildren also that, you know, something like this happened. So uh, this is an unprecedented time. As of now, we are not looking, at, we are not able to see the other end of the tunnel. It's all blind. It's all dark. But you know, now with the experience of the first wave that happened last year, I mean, I'm still a bit hopeful, although the situation is bad, but I'm still hopeful that we'll be able to make it. Correct. That's true. So now when you, when you mentioned about mental, keeping yourself healthy in your mental space. So what, what exactly do you mean by that? And how can students and doctors do that? Uh, first of all, uh, you know, when I talk about a student, a medical student, yes. Um, there's something that I feel has, you know, it has got a lot of baggage on it. I mean, if you're a medical student, you are doing, you know, MBBS or BDS or whatever it is. I personally feel that, you know, you carry a lot of baggage. You, you, you carry a lot of responsibility on your head. I mean, you are not only into the, you know, science of, you're not studying only the science of medicine, but somewhere down the line, in that science of medicine, you, I'm sure all of the doctors who are listening to this must be aware of this subject called preventive and social medicine. It is called preventive medicine. So what I personally feel and you know what I've been feeling for the last seven, eight days is that medical students should, first of all, their first job, their first responsibility is to create awareness. I've been telling this even before the second wave started that you have to create awareness about the vaccination in the people who are above 45 at your home. You have to uh, tell them what are the pros of the vaccination. You have to get them vaccinated. It is your job. So that's the first thing that I was telling. Now, as of now, I just want them to uh, ensure that, you know, their family, their loved ones, their people who are nearby, 
uh, they don't fall for all these you know whatsapp messages and you know what the, this this kind of a fake whatsapp university which has been created that you know i saw a video yesterday that somebody was i'm sorry to say but he was a doctor himself he was telling that how you can use a nebulizer as an oxygen concentrator so that is scientifically wrong so if you see any sort of that video you should try to find out the reason behind it like i'll just give you one small example you know yesterday there was a message again which was floating that you know from 1st of may there will be opening vaccination for all the women uh, for, there will be opening vaccination for everybody who is 18 above so there was a whatsapp message which was circulating that all you know women who are either menstruating or pregnant or lactating should not go for it there is no data about that there's no scientific study about that and this was a message which was circulating and i you know by the grace of god and by the love of the people around me i'm connected to thousands of medical students pan india so i kind of circulated i kind of formulated a message where i you know wrote down that you know these are the protocols and this says that nothing like this is true and then i could see that it went viral and uh, they all were trying to educate people around them and they were trying to you know put this informed uh, kind of an information everywhere so this is what i feel that as a medical student right now if first job is to be a part of the system is to feel that you are a part of the system i mean i see a lot of messages sir i'm just a medical student how can i help i said you don't use the word just you are a medical student and you are helpful and at least 5 10 15 people will listen to you creating awareness is one of the most important tools in stopping the panic of the pandemic pandemic itself is a problem i totally agree but the panic of the pandemic is a bigger issue which i think can be tackled with awareness therefore i would like to use your platform to request all medical students to come forward to create awareness to create awareness campaign to create awareness program and to make sure that there are people around them they have a well formed and a well informed mind so this is my request to all medical uh, uh, students and graduates mbbs bds everywhere yes that's that's got so correctly said so this this situation needs to that everybody needs to pitch in and to help in each and every, each and every way yes. so yes. now coming back you know to that so obviously you know medical students should create that but how can they be mentally you know healthy how should they yes. keep their mental peace is is a big question because seeing so many so much fatality so many cases so many problems around how should they keep a peace see i'll tell you um uh, what you know i have uh, um, i mean i'll tell you i'll share my own experience with the first lockdown that happened last year it happened somewhere in the end of the march so for first 10 days i still remember for the first 10 days uh, our, our entire country not even the doctors or everywhere they kind of thought that as of now survivability is a priority if we survive that's all what we want was in that that's all what we want that we should be alive then another 10 12 days later by the you know mid april somewhere somewhere down the line people realized that this is a new normal and this is how we have to live so everybody started you know doing some household activities some started cooking and some started baking and everything then another 10 days later 12 days later people started taking it as an holiday logon ko chutti ho gayi ab sab to theek hai it's fine so that is what i am trying to convey here that an empty mind is a devil's workshop so if you have an empty mind then only these things can accumulate into your mind that you know fatalities are happening and oxygen is not there i totally agree and that there are certain resources which are not available and this is creating a lot of panic and you know a lot of havoc all around us mm-hmm. but if we have to mentally if we have to mentally calm down ourselves the only way is to go forward about it and not to waste time on you know just you know talking about it discussing this condemning you know the the administration and talking about that this is not there this is not there i agree this is not there i totally agree that there are certain lapses but they, these lapses are on both the parts they are either on the part of the administration or on the part of the public of the country as well but okay. we have to understand that we have to work hard for it as best as possible we can as far as keeping the mental uh, calmness and the mental sanity the okay. only way which i feel is to try to keep your mind engaged because if i tell you okay you know the, there are certain people i mean I, i've been touching with touch with them they saying they meditate for 5 minutes listen to the music for 10 minutes what i feel is that karma is the only thing you know that is going to take you forward 
so mind is got, it is got brain has got a limited capacity of 13 1400 cc so if you bring in a lot of negativity that oh shit india is dying it is burning and things are bad then you will not have a positive input to create something that you want to so in order to do some effort in order to even create awareness for 10 people in a day you have to first empty the negativity from there and then you have to move forward so my space right now like my mental space i'll be very honest 3 days ago in the night i kind of broke down because i could not help you know anyone and one person whom i knew he passed away Uh, because of very simple thing because of the lack of the oxygen that they were not able uh, uh, they were not able to avail so for 2 hours i realized that things are not that simple but another 2 hours uh, another 2 hours later i realized that what choice do i have we don't have a choice right now i mean this is not the time where i can ask you that okay can i do this can i do this no this is the time when i can not even ask you i can tell you that dr aishi this is the only thing that we have to do so you have to be at the forefront either physically or you know digitally as you've been running this campaign so i advise all the students to just keep one thing in their head that there is no time to be wasted in the name of some sort of a pessimism you have to be optimistic and that's the only way with which you can move forward correct <clears throat> that's so correctly said and actually dr ankita sharma is also asking one thing sir i want to ask one question how can we overcome death of loved ones in all this chaos and still contribute to this pandemic because mind is so full of that frustration of losing father that you feel nothing to do well uh, ankita i first of all i really you know i'm i'm sorry for the loss that has happened and not to, in fact i will say that i'm sorry i will say that you know not only i regret but i apologize because uh, as a part of the system <clears throat> as a doctor being a doctor i think that uh, we have failed we are failing but we will try not to fail ahead and i totally agree and uh, honestly to i can say that i cannot even understand the emotion that you must have been going right now but at the same time i can uh, tell you only thing that uh, you know your father wherever he is he must be uh, he he will feel proud of yourself uh, he will he will feel proud of uh, of you because of the only fact that you know probably he must have wanting he must have been wanting you to you know do good for the society so you can take it like that i mean it's just a suggestion you can take it like that that probably his last wish or his only wish or his one of the wishes was to see you doing good for the society aap yahi soch sakte hain ki wo kahin na kahin is baat se jahan bhi honge wo khush ho rahe honge ki aap jo shayad suvidha unhe nahi mil payi the kind of facility that he could not avail i think if you work you know 1% of it of it to avail for the others i think that is probably you know the last kind of homage that we can pay to your dad i mean i i can totally understand you know that mere shabd kafi nahi hain ye sab aapko samjhane ke liye but yes time is the best healer nobody else can heal you and i am really apologize i really apologize for the loss that you have but still you can you know you can tr- you can try and i assure you that many doctors uh, they have gone through the similar kind of a tragedy but still they are working hard their level best to make the ends meet that's that's so yeah. so this is this is something you know actually dr ankita it's it's really really sad and all, all you know all words stay short for the, all of this yeah. so now with discussing about the mental health mm-hmm. there are many doctors who are getting physically also exhausted with this pandemic running for so long now it's getting very difficult for them to you know to manage everything especially now it's getting hospitals are full it's not able to manage the whole situation how what will you suggest for them to you know to take care of themselves also is a very important thing apart from taking care of patients well, <clears throat> from your end well this is my only concern right now because i know that beds are full i know that resources are almost exhausted but uh, i tweeted also a while ago on this that you know remdesivir is not available oxygen is not available beds are not available ambulance is not available what if one day you know you come and say the doctors are not available so doesn't matter how much money you have doesn't matter how much resources you have but if a doctor won't be there or a um, i mean a healthcare worker won't be there then what will you do so you have asked a very valid question uh, 
I will advise here that you know we have to follow the system of hierarchy. I'll tell you. Uh, yesterday itself, I was talking to someone to you know they are trying to set up a, a 50 bedded uh, isolation facility. So I was talking to a couple of resident doctors and I was encouraging them to come and join us for that facility. Yeah. So the doctor told me that sir, it, it will be a little tedious and it'll be a little exhausting. So I just told him one thing that, you know, when something like this happens, you have to take an inspiration of, you have to take inspiration from the people who are one level above and one level below. If a medical student or a resident doctor is getting exhausted, you know, I have spoken to many of them. They tell me, sir, I'm working just because my HOD or my senior who's 50 plus, who's diabetic, who's hypertensive, who's having comorbidities, who's most likely to develop COVID-19 and even probably, you know, the complications might happen. That person is still so overzealous and enthusiastic to come and see the patients in the COVID ward that I feel ashamed that, you know, I'm trying to kind of avoid that situation. Plus now one step below, there are a lot of sanitary workers, there are a lot of GDAs, there is a lot of other paramedical staff which is working relentlessly in a, in a COVID ward or in a COVID ICU. So when you see them working so hard, and then you feel that, you know, you are just probably, you know, tired for a bit. It's a transient rest that you want, but ultimately you have to get back to your duties for which you know, you kind of assigned yourself after the 12th boards that, yes, I will take biology and I'll become a doctor. So when you assign your mind to become a doctor, then definitely it was supposed to be tough. I mean, I'm sure that it was not supposed to be that much tough that we have right now, but now, as far as your exhaustion is concerned, my advice to many residents, which I've been giving for the last couple of weeks now, that whatever time that you take out, I'm sure being in a PP kit, I've been in that for a you know while now. So staying there in the PP kit, managing COVID patients and trying to make the ends meet, it, it is uh, it is an exhaustive task physically as well as mentally. But as far as the physical strength is concerned, uh, you know you have to take care of yourself first. I mean this is where where I want you know resident doctors to be a bit selfish. Uh, it is, uh, you know, I don't feel good also while saying this, but here I want you to understand that first of all, you are the priority. See, if a resident doctor is not well, then definitely it is going to create a loss of, you know, attending almost 10 to 15 patients or even more than that in certain setups right now. So if you priority if you feel that you are developing any of the symptoms, get it tested there and then. Mm. This is something which I have heard, I will tell you very honestly from the senior doctors even, mm. ki I had cold and I had cough and I thought, I thought kya hoga? ultimately kuch nahi, COVID hai, thoda bahut antibiotic le liya, ho nahi. You have to take care of yourself first. You have to keep yourself priority. You are not supposed to think that, no, 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 it is my line of job and I will not do this and I will not take a leave. Please get yourself tested. Please isolate yourself because you are going to be in touch with 15, 20 people minimum. You are going, you can be a spreader even. So if at all you develop any symptom, you please get yourself tested and isolate yourself. Now, as far as the physical exhaustion is concerned, whatever time, uh, you know, five hours, six hours, eight hours, whatever you get apart from your hectic duties that you're doing, please take a good sleep. First thing. Second thing is that try to, you know, listen to some music or try to talk to some positive people in your family around you. Uh, <clears throat> I think that, you know, uh, it is our duty, my duty, your duty, everyone's duty to motivate these uh, resident doctors and healthcare workers. And um, I mean, I'm already looking into it. I have spoken to a couple of people that how can we arrange a Zoom session where even these people can attend those sessions and we can just you know, maybe just sing a song for them, just to encourage them. So this is something that I want all the resident doctors to do. You know, to, uh, try to find, uh, you know, some peace and some solace also in these hectic hours, because ultimately, if you will be fit, then you can help, you know, thousands of others uh, patients. That's, that's so correctly said. And actually, that was the reason of my question also, because doctors at times just neglect themselves taking care of the patients. And that is very important. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for this insightful idea on this, you know, you. your suggestion on this. So now, you know, they are taking care of them physically as well as mentally. Third, third part comes the emotionally. As you know, Dr. Ankita also mentioned, 
you know losing loved ones also not losing loved ones you know the idea is <coughs> me as a doctor also i feel that seeing so many cases where you cannot help where you cannot manage you know where, where you see pay, you know patients crying calling you please bed dilado do, please ye kar do please wo kar do and everything how do you do that is a so tough this is, this is something that you also are dealing with so i want to understand how do you do that it is a tough task it is a very very tough task i'll be very honest in telling you that since morning uh last whatever 4 5 hours that i'm awake i have uh, kind of refused almost uh, 15 people that i won't be able to help here personally Uh, physically but yes i can tell you certain you know ways to go about it uh it it is painful uh it is very very painful but uh, you know there are certain times of helplessness or worthlessness that where you feel that you are not able to contribute to the cause of the society yes but how to deal with it it's a very simple thing that uh, whatever you cannot whatever you cannot do you are not going to cry over it but whatever you can you are going to make others happy because of it so <coughs> main kya nahi kar pa raha hu main usko leke <coughs> sorry main udaas nahi hunga lekin main kya kar sakta hu ya main kya karne ja raha hu main usko leke i'll feel happy ki main logo ki madad kar pa raha hu to first thing first jaise maine I, i said in the beginning of the conversation also that there are certain things <clears throat> which a person can do and there are certain things which a person can't do as a medical graduate as a medical student as a bds or mbs res- mbbs resident doctor uh, you can create awareness you cannot uh, ensure that somebody gets an rt pcr done on the same day and get tested and you know the results come and all those things because you are not that much indulged into the system so what you can do is best at your level what i'm doing is is best at my level what many other doctors are doing are probably best at their own level so we all have a role play we all have a system in the pot <clears throat> the only thing that hurts me is certain people though being influential though being powerful though being you know resourceful they are not contributing so that is my you know hurt i mean i have i'm, I'm very strongly against this word i'm i'm take another 2 minutes to answer this answer this i'm very strongly against this word called as you know influencer so mujhe bahut irritation hoti hai is word se i don't know why but yes i know it is uh, you know it is something which is quite uh, fashionable these days that people have a social media following and they themselves call them as influencers and but honestly for last one week i have loved uh, you know i'm i've started loving this word and i've started loving these all these people the people who have nothing to do with medical profession they are into the field of fashion they are into the field of blogging they are into the field of food they are posting all the leads and uh, there are a couple of profiles that i came across on instagram and uh, they are from gurgaon itself and the city that we live in and uh, <clears throat> they are uh, not only posting the leads they are verifying it they are mentioning it that yes i have called at this number this bed is available there i have verified it is verified at 1 uh, 10 am and please <clears throat> you can take the lead <clears throat> i've seen two three influencers and uh, of course i don't know them but they have been they are going to the hospital and they are you know doing a live streaming from there that you know oxygen is available here and something is available and something is available so what i'm trying to tell you is that it is very difficult to deal with the fact that people are asking for medicines like remdesivir or they are asking for beds they are asking for oxygen <clears throat> but somewhere down the line spreading information creating an awareness itself uh, is your job that you are doing so that is a kind of the moral responsibility that came along with the civic right in the country but yes everybody has got a level in the hierarchy like i can arrange certain things in uh, my city because i know the people here i know the system here so that is best for me right now but there are certain things which are best for you for everyone who is listening to this so try to do the best in your own capabilities and abilities and capacities correct that's that's so true <laughs> so dr prince has also mentioned something he is saying sir one experience i suffered too residents and doctors in service already trying to put their best in service mm-hmm. or covid duties but somewhere we are all occupied by many kind of negative elements continues to make sort of tortures in the form of pressures movements documents or transfers sometimes we just give up because doctors are still st- soft creatures 
for these creatures hidden in departments or societies see uh, i am totally understanding what uh, this gentleman is saying he's talking about the typical administrative work uh, which sometimes comes in the way of the work that we are doing and you know when you are dealing with a pandemic you are dealing with a critically sick patient you definitely want to focus on the medical care not on the administrative care uh, buddy i would like to tell you one thing very clearly that uh, you know human beings we have got a power to think and uh, we have got of 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 we have got a power of when to think what to think and what not to think and when not to think hame kya karna hai ye hame pata hona chahiye aur hame kab kya nahi karna hai hame ye pata hona chahiye even you know facebook has given you i mean the social media platforms have given you a button of mute a button of ignore and a button of uh, block so i am very much convinced with this fact in my own life like in my life every day i mute certain people i ignore certain people i block certain people so even though you are in a you know job you are doing you are a resident doctor you might feel that there are certain seniors maybe certain colleagues maybe certain certain non medical bureaucrats certain non medico administrative officers who are working you know uh, as a part of the you know the covid task force and you feel that they are blocking your capabilities of helping patients so there are only three things you first try to ignore them i would advise you because i've been there i've done that so that is why i'm saying this with a lot of experience so when anybody used to try to do this with me i was very vocal and i have been always very you know aggressive with this so i first i ignore then if at all it doesn't get solved then i mute if it all doesn't get that solved then i block that person because i feel that you know any person who is stopping me from following my priority like my priority is to handle a patient and if a person is stopping me from handling my priority right now then i have the authority to block that person and whatever the consequences may be i am capable enough to take care of them i mean i'm saying this i did this as an intern so don't quote that thing that sir you know i don't have that much amount of power you have power the only thing is that you have to realize it and after realization you have to execute it so please go ahead i can totally understand the problem of the resident doctors particularly who are in service they have certain non medico you know uh, hands which are blocking their way and you know there are certain people who who want uh, things to be done in their own way follow this principle of mute ignore uh, ignore mute and block that will help you that's that's amazing principle you know this is something very nicely explained sir so dr mohammad jamil is asking healthcare workers definitely need to be morally strong the nation is looking for them after god what's your opinion for the need of an integrated corridor for the doctors and healthcare workers to share their concerns and challenges and try to mitigate them in the public administrative domain see uh, i totally uh, understand and i totally appreciate what you are saying but um, creating a forum for that or you know creating a campaign for that or creating something like that probably that's not the need of the art i totally appreciate whatever you are saying i whatever i got from your question is that you know you are asking that healthcare workers we have our own issues and how do we convey our concern to the higher authorities i think probably that is the question right yes. so i don't think that you know we it is the right time to do that the right time is not uh, to talk about our concern the right time is to talk about the concerns that you know this country of 130 135 crore uh, population has so we are right now we are we are more concerned about that we do have our concerns and uh, uh, i'll be doing this job which i don't like will be like you know washing the dirty linen in the public but yes uh, i'll do that for a minute uh, whatever concerns that we people have they don't get to the top of the administrative services and they don't get solved only because of the uh, lack of an ethical hierarchy in the medical system right now whatever problem an intern has i have never seen i mean for last decade at least i can say i have never seen a junior resident or a you know post graduate resident solving that problem of an intern whatever problem that pg resident has i don't see an assistant professor coming and helping him out whatever problem that ap has i don't see a unit head or a hod coming out and being vocal about him 
you have, you have to understand this. Like I'll tell you, there was an exam which was going to be conducted on 18th of April, uh, the NEET PG. Yes. I mean, NEET PG was <coughs> okay. I think uske, around five seven days before, uh, I, I came across a couple of students on social media where one student messaged me that, sir, how about this drug called as Medrol? Uh, I said, why you want to know about it? They said, sir, I am COVID positive. Uh, I have hardly any symptoms. There's just a mild fever and uh, I'll be appearing for the exam and I want to know that can I take steroids so that I have a feeling of well-being and I can perform better in the exam. I was shocked. I was shocked. In my entire uh, medical uh, educational career, uh, where I was a student in MBBS and post-graduation and there on, I've never taken, forget about a you know, propranolol or any, you know, beta blocker. I've never taken even a Zolpidem, which is, you know, normal angiolytic taken by many, many medical students in the colleges. So I said, Beta, if you're COVID positive and if you think that you have symptoms, first of all, it is about you right now. You are not supposed to take up the exam because you're not well. Why do you want to travel? Why do you want to exert yourself? And she said, sir, this is the life. This is my life. I said, no, this is not your life. This exam is a very small uh, component of a very large exam called as life. Life is a bit bigger exam. This exam is very small in front of that. So why do you want to do that? She said, sir, no, sir, I want to take up uh, this uh, exam and this is my life. And I just want you to tell me that uh, taking the steroid is, a, is a safe. Then I realized that there are many students who are COVID positive and they'll be going for that exam. And not only they will hurt their own life, they will damage their own you know, vitals, but somewhere down the line, they'll become spreader for others. Yes. So that is when I started tweeting that you know we have to postpone this exam. And I wrote a kind of an open letter also to the health minister. And I got us kind of support from certain, certain, very certain section of the uh, students. But when that delay happened uh, in the night itself, I got a lot of passion on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook. There were random anonymous profiles writing, you know, bullish things about me that why did you get this postponed and why did you get this postponed? I did an Instagram live on the same night asking everyone that please don't do this. This is something which is required. And three days later, I got a message from many, I got messages from many students that thankfully it got postponed because today my father tested positive or my brother tested positive. He was having, my father was having symptoms for the last six days. He must have accompanied me to the exam center. He must have interacted with a lot of people. He must have been the source for infection for, you know, many other people. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that it is the problem in the ethical hierarchy of our system that seniors don't speak for the juniors. <clears throat> and this has become a chain reaction. This is a fusion reaction. This is a chain reaction. That if my senior has said to me, I will not say to you. Why don't you say to me? Why don't you say to me? Why don't you say बोलना जो है मैं बोलने से मेरा मतलब आवाज उठाने से मेरा मतलब सिर्फ कोई जो है बीइंग रेबेलियस नहीं है मैं, मैं कोई बागी नहीं बनना चाहता हूं इट्स जस्ट दैट आई फील दिस इज नॉट गुड दिस इज नॉट एथिकल दिस इज माय जूनियर एंड ही नीड्स सपोर्ट ही नीड्स मॉरल सपोर्ट ही नीड्स फिजिकल सपोर्ट आई विल बी देयर फॉर देम फॉर हिम सो आई विल वेरी ऑनेस्ट दैट टिल द टाइम वी डोंट अचीव दिस काइंड ऑफ अ एथिकल हायरार्की वी डोंट अचीव दिस काइंड ऑफ अ यूनिटी इन द मेडिकल फ्रेटर्निटी uh there is no point in making a forum for our concerns and taking to the top you have to understand 100 people if they are worried about something first they have to come on a similar platform and then you know you can get the problem solved from the people above you so anyways it is not the time for all this the time for this will come surely and then i i think i will be able to do it sir what you have mentioned is actually correctly said there were a lot of people who were like you know kyun ho gaya because see people are preparing since years two years three years but yes what is important right now is important correctly said so now coming to this you know as in the start you mentioned that for keeping your mental health you know in place you should keep your mind engaged what i understood so now keeping your mind engaged is is another one thing you know which is very important to understand how to do that because for doctors who are working for residents who are working that's a completely different game but for students who are from colleges colleges are shut there are online classes going on there are studies going on but still to keep completely engaged to keep completely active and to keep in focus is becoming a bit difficult for them also so as now healthcare is also evolving healthcare is changing the way of dealing with patients is changing for everybody since the last year we are seeing how things are changing how it is evolving how things are going online how patients are also adapting to this 
how now there are many people many patients who are actually who have started taking online consultations only because of you know the convenience or any any other reason so how what do you think now are the important skills that a doctor should have to get adapted to the current scenario and this is especially for the students who are who have time right now who want to understand what all they can do for their future life see uh, i'll just rephrase the thing that uh, okay i'll tell you <clears throat> a student uh, first year mbbs second year third year bds any course who's not into active covid duty okay yes. my first suggestion uh, being a senior being an elder is first to prepare a kind of a timetable on a daily basis for yourself i can still see i still know i am still aware of certain people who are again taking this as a kind of a second holiday of 2021 you know of course you know delgona coffee is not there this year and uh, all these you know challenges on uh, instagram are not there this year but still there are many people who are still taking it as an extension of the holiday ke chalo theek hai sal bhi chutti ho gayi hai so first of all i want you to understand that this is not the time of a holiday this is just like a, for you people who are not into active covid duties this is just like a you know another phase of your life where you are devoid of certain things which are mandatory for you yes i mean i was in mbbs i know that uh, if i was in first year mbbs and i could not attend the practical lectures or dissection hall or a, maybe the second year you know pharmacology practical or microbiology practical and i don't know how to do a zed in staining because you are hardly going into the medical college you are hardly attending the clinical ward rounds you are hardly attending the bedside clinics so you are losing a lot it is not going to happen that you or probably the system is going to say next year or oh, that you know last year we could not give you bedside clinic so we will take an extension of 6 months into mbbs to provide you the clinical uh, kind of a you know teaching no nobody is going to be bothered about this so it is the time where you are supposed to be bothered uh, you know for yourself so you have to utilize this time you have to utilize the resources first of all by what by making a time table for yourself by prioritizing that okay fine you know this new series has come on netflix you are supposed to see that but at the end of the day this has to be not your daily routine that you wake up in the morning rather i would say for most of them you wake up in the afternoon uh, you take your uh, whatever lunch brunch you have and then you try to find out kya netflix pe kuch naya nahi aa raha hai amazon prime pe kuch naya nahi aa raha because i know many of the people even the medical students are doing that so for them i have a very strong message that you know zindagi padi hai in sab cheezon ke liye filhal jo aap kho rahe hain aapke medical college ki classes na hone ki wajah se aapko andaza bhi nahi hai is waqt ki aap kya kho rahe hain jab aapko andaza hoga i can assure you bahut der ho chuki hogi so first thing is to make a time table for yourself that okay fine just you have to you have to believe as if everything is the normal for you so you get up in the morning you fix a time you get up by that time you make your own bed you make your own bed because that i think is the first thing to come in discipline <clears throat> and then you and then you start studying as if that you are in a medical college i mean i am a part of a educational institution called dams where we uh, train doctors for the, who have done their mbbs we train them for pg entrance and we've been running online classes i mean when last year all this happened uh, we never went for any recorded versions that okay fine we'll give you some recorded like we conducted live uh, online lectures right like even now there is a live lecture which is going on on our app uh, so i want you to take care of the alternative resources that you have but you have to be in touch you have to be in sync with the education component whether your college is conducting or not conducting any offline or online classes first thing second thing eventually you are going to become a doctor that is for sure the technology is going to play a very 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 important role in the part of the medical practice that is going to happen in 2000 you know 22 or 23 or 24 and onwards so my suggestion to you is that try to get the hang of it try to try to get the hang of it when i'm saying that what does what do i mean i mean that you have to now start exploring many online journals like i am a big fan of pubmed 
I always tell every medical student that whatever topic that you study from your textbook or from us, after that you go back to the PubMed and you try to search an article because when you study a topic theoretically and then you find it the clinical aspect of it on and in the form of an article or in the form of a study, you kind of develop a 360 degree picture of that topic that okay, how this patient is going to present, these are the symptoms, these are the signs, this is how a doctor is going to manage and these are the possible treatments and this is how the treatment is going to, the patient is going to respond to the treatment. So it is the time for active learning. It is the time where you first divide your day into certain parts. Like I advise you that you divide your day into seven hours of sleep and whatever remaining 17 hours that you have, you divide 17 hours into three hours of leisure, whatever Netflix or whatever you want to do. You are living in a society where you can go out for a walk. Please do that. Uh, don't ju just be a douchebag. So out of 17 hours, you have to give three hours for your uh, you know, leisure. Then remaining 14 hours, I would advise you to give two hours at least to your family if you're staying with them because most of you know medical students are back from the medical colleges now. They're not in the hostels. So at least two hours you have to give to, to, to your family for the domestic chores, for the you know, everything, utensils and everything because it is a part of your job also. So another 12 hours you divide. You divide six hours and six hours. Six hours is for your active study, for your subjects. Like if you are in second year, third year, you have to, the academic component should contribute at least six hours a day. And the remaining six hours, fine, do, do anything. I mean, there's Kindle, there are hard copies, there are books, there are good authors. I personally feel a man is, I mean, there's a saying, a man is known by the friends that he keep. I personally feel that a man is known by the books that he reads. So be a voracious reader, use this time to be inside your home and try to read as much as you can, which can inspire not only you, which can see you are in an age and stage where a medical student is around what, 19, 20, 21, 22 years of age. What I personally feel is that this span of, you know, from 17 years to 22 years, this is a very malleable and a very ductile phase. So you can actually mend it, you can bend it, you can change your vision, you can develop a new tangent of thinking, and you you can nurture yourself with some inspirational people, books, material, knowledge, education, lectures, journals, online uh, portals around you. So try to explore Netflix and movies and Amazon Prime and all these online games. You know, there's life for that. Zindagi padi uske liye. So abhi aap istemal karein jo bhi online material aapke aas pas available hai, or and try to develop a new kind of a tangent as you must have been doing while you were attending a bedside clinic in a medical college. So you have to pretend that you know you are following the same, but in a new normal. Hmm. Hmm. But that is possible only if you make a, a kind of a timetable first. That's so amazingly, you know, mentioned, sir, you know, making a timetable is so much important and very correctly said. So now when we understand for the students and for the current students, as you mentioned that NEET PG has been postponed for BDS students as well, you know, the results are out in December and there's no counseling since the last three, four, five months. People are in the loop of uncertainty, what to do, what not to do. Any suggestions from your end for them, you know, what? should they look forward to and how should they keep their mental peace in this? See, uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, those people who are done with their exam, their results are out and they're waiting for the counseling. I can totally understand uh, the agony, the pain, because I've been through it when I gave my PG entrance exam, my state PG entrance exam. We gave the exam, result came out and we got the ranks. We were about to join and suddenly something happened and uh, that exam was considered null and void and we were supposed to write the, take up the same exam about, I think, 20 days later, there was a new date which was announced. There was a kind of something scam or something that happened and you know, the government said that it's a null and void exam and we'll do it again. So that 20, 25 days of uncertainty where not only we were uh, preparing for the next uh, date for the which was announced, but everybody was kind of, you know, sad and mourning that, okay, I got seven rank or I got 10 rank or I got 11 rank. I, I could have joined this. I could have joined this. But somewhere down the line, there was a hope also that, you know, like this time maybe I can even perform better and get a better rank and a better seat. So hope is the only word which is the most useful word in this entire you know thing that I've told you. So there is only thing that drives all of us and that is hope. So if your results are out, your counseling is yet to happen. So just hope for the best that can happen to you. I mean, you are losing on time. I totally understand and I totally agree. But just as, as I said earlier, for the resident, for the MBBS, you know, the, the students who are in MBBS, I'll say the same thing for you. 
try to pretend that things are sorted and uh, according to the rank by now you must be aware of the fact that you'll be able to get this plus minus 10 15 percent i agree but you have to pretend you have to make use of the time because the situation the circumstances are not like that you know something definitive can be done so uh, you know uh, i i personally feel that a successful man is that who tends to you know mend his or her own ways and find a middle path and work, work on it now uh, i conducted a session also for all those people whose exam have been cancelled and uh, they are waiting that you know when this next date will be announced my only suggestion to all of them is that that exam has been postponed it has not been cancelled the first thing that i want all of them to if they are listening you have to understand that exam cancel nahi hua hai wo sirf postpone hua hai as of now what the data is saying or what the statistics are saying although you know i have stopped believing in the data right now considering the situation all around us but the data says that we'll be able to achieve the flattening of the curve by the end of may and hopefully the cases will fall down by the mid of june i mean this is what you know the leader and the statisticians the leading statisticians are saying so i think that probably your exam will be in mid june or maybe end of june so technically you have 50 55 days mm-hmm. i'm sure that when you were preparing for the exam to be happening on 18th of april or whatever date that was uh, there were many things that you were feeling about ki agar mujhe thoda time aur mil jata to shayad main khatam kar leta ya mujhe aur time mil jata to shayad main wo bhi pad leta wo jo shayad shayad wali cheeze thi you can finish them now so for that what is required for that what is required is that the first thing is acceptance the first and the foremost thing is acceptance ki exam postpone ho gaya hai i don't know why but 5 10 10% people are still living in denial so first thing is acceptance that exam has been postponed second thing is acceptance that it has been postponed not cancelled third thing in acceptance is that i have to prepare again and ahead for it fourth thing is that whatever topics that left completely or probably i was not very sure of i have to first you know take a a4 size paper i have to write all those topics on that paper and my first job is to finish those topics because when you will finish those topics which you have never heard of or read of that will kind of you know give you a feeling of uh, confidence and satisfaction ki yaar ye agar us din exam hota aur main jata to main main isko shayad padhta bhi nahi aur aaj maine isko pad liya so that should give you a sense of satisfaction correct uh, initially when you start preparing again for the exam which has been delayed certainly the dates have not been announced you have to think that you have to you, you have to think that you know i was informed that around 1 lakh 70 75000 st- forms were filled for the neat pg that was supposed to happen on 18th of april so i mean you can just imagine that if you are not studying quoting the word that you know there is a lot of uncertainty and how will i prepare how should i prepare even the dates have not been declared i can assure you that out of 1 lakh 75000 students at least 15 to 20000 students must be very intelligent awake aware and alert that they will be using this time very judiciously वो लोग इस वक्त पे वो इसको एज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी लेके चल रहे होंगे कि अरे यार सही हो गया यार अभी पचास दिन और मिल गया आप देखो क्या करता हूँ मैं और यहाँ पे एक तरह की स्टूडेंट और हैं जो सिर्फ एक ही वो बार बार कहे जा रहे हैं कि पता नहीं कब होगा एग्जाम कब होगा डेट कब आएगी ऐसे कब होगा वैसे कब होगा दिस इज अ टाइम नॉट टू आस्क क्वेश्चन दिस इज अ टाइम टू गिव यूर बेस्ट इनपुट सो दैट यू कैन हैव द बेस्ट आउटपुट वेन एवर दिस एग्जाम that's so true so you know after understanding everything for everybody you know one thing i really want to understand from you and actually to end this thing on a high note is how do you keep yourself so positive you know what is the what is the thing that you do every day or you read or what is it that always keeps you high in your positivity and your you know motivation i'll be honest in telling you one thing uh, meri ek line hai jo main i mean i'm very fond of using this line i've been using this for last 5 7 years mm. but i didn't know that one day you know the time will come that i will have to say it again mm. it is not a practice or a habit that i do now it is something that i've been doing for years that whenever i get up in the morning and uh, you know i uh, have a habit of first trying to avoid my mobile i mean i just don't do that बिकॉज नॉर्मली क्या होता है कि जैसे आई वेयर स्पेक्टिकल्स नॉर्मली क्या होता है जो लोग चश्मा पहनते हैं वो चश्मा पहनते हैं सबसे पहले उठने के बाद दे हैव अ सप ऑफ वाटर और नॉट और वो मोबाइल देखते हैं मेरी एक आदत है मैं मोबाइल सुबह कभी नहीं देखता हूँ मैं चश्मा पहनता हूँ और उसके बाद आई स्टेड वे गो टू द वॉशरूम एंड आई यू नो वॉश माई फेस देन आई टेक माई टूथ ब्रश आई पुट द टूथ पेस्ट 
and I take good three to five minutes in brushing my teeth. And when I do that, the only thing that I do is I look in front of, I look in front in the mirror and I smile. And when I smile, that smile is for myself. Because if I haven't seen my own face in the morning, then I think that my day will not be good. It's a very silly thing, but I think it's good to do that. And when I do that, not only I smile, but somewhere down the line, I thank God. And this is what I've been doing for years now. So when I'm brushing my teeth, not only I'm smiling, but I'm thanking God. Ki, yeah, God, thank you. You have given me one more day to live. Because probably there will be hundreds and hundreds of people in India and thousands of people pan, you know, globe. Jinko aaj subah uthne ka mauga hi nahi mila hoga. Main ek hi soch ke saath aur ye aaj ki soch nahi hai meri. Main kai saalon se mere saath chal raha hai. Ki bhoot sao loog ya hazaar loog aise hoonge jo aaj uthe hi nahi hoonge. तो मुझे एक दिन का और मौका मिला है तो मुझे क्या अच्छा मुझे कल का नहीं पता मुझे कल नहीं पता कि कल मैं ये सेम टूथब्रश यूज कर रहा हूँ नहीं कराऊंगा तो जो आज का दिन मुझे मिला है मुझे इसका बेस्ट यूज करना आई हैव टू मेक द बेस्ट यूज आउट ऑफ इट सो दैट काइंड ऑफ गिव्स मी अ मोटिवेशन दैट येस विद दैट थ्री मिनट्स ऑफ लुकिंग इन टू दैट मिरर एंड ब्रशिंग माई टीथ एंड थैंकिंग गॉड दैट यू हैव गिवन मी अ डे टू लिव टू सर्वाइव टू मेक द बेस्ट यूज ऑफ इट एंड प्रॉब्ली आई वोट गेट टूमोरो और नॉट this kind of thing which is a kind of a motivates me from within so it is a kind of a self motivation i would say because enough matlab main thak chuka tha to get it from others and to seek it from outside so i thought that now it is a time to create inside khud ki factory lagate hain motivation ki so wo karte 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 i i used to start you know feel happy about my work my life my day because honestly i used to take one day at a time I mean, I've been very fond of uh, whenever there is a difficult time, I make short-term realistic goals. I never say that I will do this in so many days, so many days, so many days. I make short-term goals, I make realistic goals, I make achievable goals. Because I know when I will achieve that goal, whatever it is, anything can happen, this goal. So when I achieve that goal, which I know is achievable, but I deliberately set it like that. So when I achieve that, I, I sleep with a feeling of contentment. and that makes me that gives me a feeling ki that i have i've been a, this is my victory so that inspires me to wake up even early next morning and to utilize more time to you know uh, realize what i want to do but ye karte karte mujhe nahi pata tha ki ek din corona virus aa jayega aur actually mai brush karte hue you know i'll be thankful to god ki god uh, my oxygen saturation is uh, 98 and my you know temperature is normal so i didn't know that this is going to happen but yes uh i mean this really helps me plus uh, i feel that uh, on this planet in this world that we live log bolte hain ki there are two types of people you know ek acche hote hain ek bure hote hain mera aisa manna bilkul nahi hai mera aisa manna hai ki insaan kabhi acha bura nahi hota halaat acche bure hote hain to insaan kabhi galat nahi hota koi insaan galat nahi hota wo uske halaat pe depend karta hai so man is you know and a product of the circumstances so I don't believe in that classification of good and bad. I believe in the classification of optimist and pessimist. So pessimist is that person who is going to complain all the time. He's going to complain, complain, and just complain. उसको हर चीज़ में negativity दिखती है. There's an old saying also that you know three people were sailing on a boat and suddenly सामने से तूफान आ गया. So जो pessimist था वो रोने बैठ गया कि अभी हमारी boat डूब जाएगी, हम मर जाएंगे, सब मर जाएंगे, everybody will die and this will happen and this will happen. but there was another guy who was optimist he was very hopeful he said nahi nee, don't worry something will happen some magic will happen you know we'll be saved and blah 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 so i definitely i hate all these pessimism around me and i encourage optimism around me as i've been saying earlier but then after this pessimist and optimist there was a third person on the boat also he was a possibilist he was a leader he was a, when i say the word possibilist possibilist means the person who feels that everything is possible the only thing is that you have to make an effort for that जिसको आप लीडर भी बोलते हो बट आई डोंट लाइक द वर्ड लीडर बिकॉज लीडर इज समथिंग दैट डजेंट यू नो रेजोनेट विद माय थॉट प्रोसेस सो आई वांट टू कॉल इट पॉसिबिलिस्ट द एक्चुअल स्टोरी हैज द वर्ड लीडर इन इट बट आई डोंट यूज दैट वर्ड आई यूज द वर्ड पॉसिबिलिस्ट सो देयर इज अ थर्ड पर्सन वो बोलता है यार सामने से तूफान आ रहा है बोट को ऐसे मोड़ लेते हैं तूफान के साथ-साथ बोट को लेके निकल जाएंगे सो व्हेनेवर आई सी अ प्रॉब्लम विद मी विद इन मी अराउंड मी विद पीपल अराउंड मी i just you know uh, activate that mode of being a possibilist and i want to troubleshoot that problem solve it there and then 
for anyone who's known to me or you know so i think that this mindset of waking up every morning thanking god for another day to live to make it possible to the best of your sources and being a possibilist to troubleshoot your problems if you start believing that every day one day it will become a part of your uh, you know it will it will be a part of your personality so i think that really helps yes and and that's so nice to you know, know all of this and i'm sure me as well as many many of our viewers will now implement that in their lifestyle because it's i always believe what you think is what happens so you know this is this is so correctly said you know you should being a possibilist is another thing that now people should follow apart from being optimist thank you so much you know dr tushar for this whole discussion for this whole you know knowledge transition i must say this is something that that was amazing that actually can will help a lot of people as well as myself in understanding the situation to cope up to get through the whole thing thank you so much dr tushar and thank you so much everyone for joining us at this time i'm sure this discussion would have helped you immensely in understanding the situation and to sail your boat through it thank you so much thank yes, you yes yes do share this with your friends and colleagues who you think is finding it difficult to sail through the situation they will actually feel motivated after this and you will definitely do a great thing in helping that, that you know them to go through as well as as dr tushar said be a part of the society in helping each other to educate each other to educate as much as you can and to help as much as you can you know this i am so happy to have this discussion here thank you so much everyone for joining us H have a nice day bye bye everyone thank you so much everyone thank you being a part of the conversation and thank you dr aishi for uh, such a nice initiative and i'm sure your initiative the social doctor is uh, going to help and is going to make a difference to many lives all around us thank you so thank much thank you so much sir thank you so much bye bye